So I get one of those stupid emails from Handshake, right? Jen from Paycom sent you a message. And it's one of those messages that goes, well, we saw your profile and, you know, we send this message to everyone anyways. Long story short, Jen was trying to turn me into a salesperson. I've got nothing against salespeople. To be honest, I don't really know any. I mean, I had to read this terrible book for a class once, but that's about it. But I do have something against the Pavlovian simpletons who try to recruit salespeople. Check this out. This is the kind of stuff that these companies tell people who they're trying to recruit for sales positions. This is actually Paycom's website. We carry the spirit of winning with us in everything we do. Do you want to be a winner in life? Then join our sales team because selling equals winning. The more you sell, the more you win. If you don't sell, you can't win. If you don't win, duh, you lose. And if you lose, you're obviously a failure in life. This is the psychological garbage that these recruiters try to peddle to unsuspecting college students looking to make the next right decision in life. Oh, do you want to win in life? Join our sales team. We carry the spirit of winning in us in everything we do. Don't fall for that crap. Success isn't the size of your account portfolio. There is more to life than a 10% commission. I mean, after all, who gets the other 90%? Career chaos on tea time starts now. law school and he's like yeah I think right after law school if I get this job I'll be making like $190,000 and I was like oh. <laughs> what as a 24 year old <laughs> don't tell the admissions office this but uh I was going with a major that I thought I could get in uh most the easiest way <laughs> so the main reason why I got into mostly the field of engineering specifically is because of behind that I had a really good sense of you know problem solving and, and had really strong math skills. Hard to find a job. I think I, I think I will be able to find a job. I'm not sure if it's going to, I'm going to have one set up right out of college, but I'm definitely going to, I think I will be able to get one eventually. And it's definitely not going to be the job I want, but it's going to be kind of a job that I can work and build upon to get to like the bigger jobs I want. Basically, I'm going to say on a scale of one to five blank, and then you guys will give me like a finger or like a amount of number of fingers right um and then i'll probably just throw another question at a specific person depending on like how many fingers they raise you know oh why would you say that why did you think this and this and that so i'm gonna start by uh, introductions nd intros name uh college dorm and year if i remember correctly you guys can go in any order well, I'll start. Hi, my name is Maya Pewterbot. I'm a junior from Irvine, California. I'm majoring in marketing and film. Um, I was formerly in Pascarilla West Hall. I was supposed to study abroad though, that didn't happen. So now I'm displaced and living in Fisher grad residences with Father Jenkins, a couple houses away. Well, um, I'll introduce myself next. Uh, my name is Wada Panetta. I'm in the College of Engineering. I am currently in Keenan Halls. Um, and, you know, on the second year, I'm a sophomore. Hey, um, I'll go next. I'm Chloe Stafford. I am a sophomore living in Ryan Hall. I am from Westchester, New York, and I'm in the College of Arts and Letters, and I'm an FDT major. And I'm Cesar Sanchez. I'm a first year student living in the beautiful Balmer Hall. Um, I'm from the city of Chicago, Illinois, and I am in the College of Science, planning on studying in statistics. So, okay, first question. 
uh, when deciding your major in college on a scale of one to five fingers, how big of a role did future financial security play? Okay, Eduardo immediately threw up a five. Eduardo, why do you say that? Uh, well, the main reason why I got into mostly the field of engineering specifically is because of behind that, I had a really good sense of you know problem solving and, and had really strong math skills. But the main reason why is because I had passion for that subject and financial security initially was very important to me because my family was you know like poor back then. So I thought like, I need to find something that I have a passion for and that I could help support my family on so they could get out of like their severe debt and stuff. So that's why I chose engineering as my pathway. Okay, so like if I were to ask you uh, like another question sooner, it would be like, how about uh, how happy you'd be with your job? So you gave a five for financial security, but you'd also probably give a five in terms of like enjoyment of the job? Yes. Okay, that's good. Uh, Chloe, you threw up a two. I did throw up a two. I am a FTT major with a uh, concentrating in film. And honestly, I kind of gave myself free range to do whatever major I wanted. I didn't want like just basically just what I like to do. And my parents were also very supportive of that. So I really didn't have much constriction. And I know you can make money in the film industry. It, it's very hard, especially right out of college. So I know there's definitely going to be a little bit like I'm not going to be a very rich person, especially right out of college, but I think there is some possibility to make some money. Okay, cool. Caesar, did you throw up a four or a five? I threw up a four. Um, and that's mainly because, well, you know, it was kind of a big factor for me at least to pick a major that I could see myself uh, not only really enjoying personally and getting involved in and something that I'm passionate about, but also something that would be able to support me and my family, as Eduardo said. Um, and more so something that's just feasible um, in terms of kind of long-term projections. Statistics, I know, is like really high in terms of um, average uh, first year out of college income. So for me, that was something that was just, you know, something that I really have a passion for and something that I know I could be really successful with. Maya, do you want to close us out of the question? Why'd you throw up? You threw up a four? Yeah, I was also a four. Um, is I, get, I kind of picked my college more. Like, like I picked my college first um, when I was applying to Notre Dame. I went with Mendoza because um, even thinking about my future, I really liked the entertainment industry and I had done like a lot of theater growing up. But I like I think I had joked once that I was going to be an actress to my parents and they laughed. So I was like, OK, well, maybe I'll do like the business side of that. Um, and I kind of just ended up in marketing because I was really bad at finance, which sucks because they make the real money. <laughs> um, but I really enjoyed marketing and I knew coming out of Notre Dame with a Mendoza degree would definitely be lucrative um and it was something that I just kind of thought like yeah I guess I also kind of had some not direct familial pressure but I just my family had experienced some financial hardship and it was something I really didn't want to have to worry about in the future and I didn't want my like family at all to worry about that for me so I went with something that I thought would be stable we're always going to need marketers <laughs> film's just fun okay Caesar, let me throw this question at you would you believe that the money you make uh, would you think that money buys happiness? Like, do you think you'll be happy doing what you do because of the money you make or? No, definitely not at all. Um, I mean, I, I think I would definitely be unhappy if I was um, struggling to make thing, make ends meet um, and struggling to support my family. But I don't necessarily think having the money would make me happy. It would just um, give me the means so that I wouldn't be unhappy is, is what I would say. But I definitely think it's more important that I'm actually doing something that I'm passionate about, something that I'm actually good at and something that benefits the world in some way, uh, more so than just getting money. Um, so it, yeah, it's more important of the other aspects and, and financial considerations are just kind of a bonus with that. Chloe, would you say you have this pretty much the same opinion? or um similar I would say that mine is basically all like majority based off enjoyment and I think that that's why I chose to do film is because it's something I enjoy and something I have experienced through high school and stuff and I already knew I had to enjoy it and I think just I know a lot of people say like you'll never work the day of, a day in your life if you like love your job and that's kind of like my, my mindset I hope like I never have to work a day in my life just because I'm gonna hopefully love the job and love the industry I'm in
But Maya, Eduardo, you can like shake your head. Do you guys have a different opinion or does that like pretty much cover the board? That covers it for me. I definitely agree with Caesar a lot uh, as far as like, I think to a certain point, like money buys happiness in the sense that I would be comfortable and safe and those are necessities. But I think if I was a billionaire, I'd be bored and I can like, I, I don't, I think at a certain point money stops adding like anything to your life. Um, I would agree with uh, what Caesar said and Maya said. Um, oh, basically money doesn't really buy happiness, but um, I feel like in my career at least, um, you know, like just buying the resources for like what we need to like experiment with, for example. Like if I want to buy an RTX 3090, those are really, really expensive. So, I mean, to a degree, uh, money doesn't buy happiness once you make enough, I would say at least, you know, a stable amount. And beyond that, just, you know, fluff on top of whatever, whatever else, you know, we already have. Even I was thinking earlier, I was talking to another friend and I'm like, how much money would I be comfortable making? Like 80,000 seems like a lot of money, but I know people who make over like $100,000. And I'm like, really? <laughs> I don't know. I got a friend who's about to graduate law school and he's like, yeah, I think right after law school, if I get this job, I'll be making like $190,000. And I was like, oh. <laughs> what as a 24 year old? <laughs> I, I can't even imagine that. It's absurd to me, but he also has law school debt. So, <laughs> oh, that's yeah. true. Okay. Yeah. Right. Like it's balancing. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So another question. So this, this might be a little weird, like finger wise. So how many years, like before coming to Notre Dame, did you know what you were going to major in? Does that make sense as a question? Okay, so like if I hold up a two, I knew in 10th grade that I knew what I was going to major in what I was going to major in. So like, did you guys know pretty early on or was it kind of late? So. <laughs> uh, Maya, let's start with you. <laughs> okay. Caesar and I have had very similar answers for all these questions. <laughs> um, yeah, I had no idea. All I knew was, I knew I wanted to do something in business just because I had kind of talked to my dad about it. Um, and it seemed like, and I just, when we talked about it, it seems like I'd be good in something business oriented, but I wasn't sure what exactly. So um, I knew I wanted to go to Notre Dame my sophomore year of high school. So then when I was applying, I just was like, all right, Mendoza, and then I'll figure it out. And then I figured it out when I got here. Okay. It was kind of just like process of elimination because I was terrible at accounting, not good at finance either, didn't like IT. So I was like, all right, I guess it's management or marketing. <laughs> and... <laughs> Yeah, and then the film when I came about, like, just because it was really fun, I liked it. So did your family at all, like, did that kind of run in the family, the whole business and film thing? Or is that, like, just kind of new for you and unique? Um, I'm the first film one. Um, business was kind of, like, my mom was, I, I think, probably does something somewhat similar. My dad does, like, security for the government, so <laughs> nothing like that at all. Um, so yeah, I guess I'm kind of the first but like my family was always very supportive of me doing what I wanted to do um as long as they like but they were also always telling me you know just make sure like yeah you enjoy it but like we also of course want you to be like you know financially stable and comfortable and safe and secure so like they emphasize that but they're like as long as you can have that but still enjoy life do whatever you want to do like they, they weren't really all that worried about me but they just kind of always reminded me of the things like don't forget to consider this and then I got to college and figured it out. <laughs> uh, Eduardo, you threw up almost all of your fingers. Uh, yeah. did, you, did you know, like, because you just enjoyed it so much or did it run in your family? Uh, I would say it had to be just like personal experience over time. My family, you know, some of my parents went to, I have uh, only one of my parents graduated high school, other one just finished middle school and then they kind of dropped out. And oh uh, yeah, it's kind of like, so, our family doesn't really have any graduates or anything like that. You know, most of them work in cars, you know, automotive sales or landscaping or just working with trucks, for example, or cars. But for me, I really found that passion for computer science, like all the way back in like late elementary school when I joined like this little robotics club uh, with, you know, the Lego robotics club. And that's kind of what got me interested in that field. And I was like, oh, this seems fun, you know. And that's like really the only kind of clubs I joined, and that's why I built that interest over the years. So that's what really like brought me into that field. Sweet. Uh, Caesar, you threw up the zero as well. Did you just kind of go into like the College of Science and go, I'll figure it out, or? No, um, actually, don't tell the admissions office this, but uh, I was going with a major that I thought I could get in uh, most the easiest way. <laughs> um, so. <laughs> 
I think uh, that was my approach with with kind of all college admissions. Um, I actually, uh, for most of my college high school career, I wanted to um, go into aerospace engineering. Um, at a certain point, I took physics and I realized that wasn't a feasible road for me. So then I, I you know, I took a statistics class my senior year and I really enjoyed it. And I'd always been a big fan of, um, you know, statistics from like sports statistics to, to actuarial studies and so forth. So that was something that I, I was actually really a fan of. Um, and then college admissions came around and I was like, well, I need to pick a major. Um, realistically, I'm probably not going to get in these schools with aerospace engineering, not necessarily. So let's go with statistics and see what happens. And um, so at that point, it was just kind of a throw it on the application and see where it goes. But now it's something that, you know, I've actually put more thought into and I'm actually much more invested in. Um, but, but yeah, you, you know, you just, you never know when you'll find what you find. <laughs> nice. And then Chloe, you threw up a two. I, yes, I threw up a two. So for me, I probably figure out my sophomore year that I kind of want to do film because at my high school, we have a really good elective program. So that's when I started doing, they have a film elective at my high school. So I started doing that and that's kind of when I like fell in love with it and kind of started to like look at colleges based on that. And my parents, like before then, I thought I was going to study business just because both my parents are accountants. Uh, my mom graduated from Mendoza. My uncle, he works in business. Basically, my whole family does. So I thought I was just going to like kind of go on that that route. But I kind of, um, when I found something I really liked, I was like, why don't I just try and pursue this? So that's kind of how I landed upon film. Um, all right. So next question. Uh, so bringing back scales of one to five, how confident are you that you'll land a job straight after graduation or even before graduation? Okay, Chloe, I don't mean to start off with you again right off the bat, but I went off your vibes. <laughs> Yeah, we can do that. Um, getting a job, I think the film industry is very cutthroat, specifically what I want to do. And I think that it will be hard to find a job. I think I, I think I will be able to find a job. I'm not sure if it's going to, I'm going to have one set up right out of college, but I'm definitely going to, I think I will be able to get one eventually. And it's definitely not going to be the job I want, but it's going to be kind of a job that I could work and build upon to get to like the bigger jobs I want. So I think it is a little more difficult than other majors to get a job in, obviously, but I think it's still doable. Caesar, you threw up a five. Do you think the people are going to come crawling to you for jobs? I only hope so. <laughs> um, but no, it, it's really just kind of a basis of, um, you know, statistics majors aren't necessarily, uh, it's not necessarily a very popular major, which makes it kind of more um, niche, uh, more lucrative in some sense. So I'm pretty confident I'll be able to find something um, especially because I really want to stay around my hometown of Chicago and I know how big of roots ND has in Chicago so that's you know kind of a big thing that I'm looking for and uh, you know to kind of to my own own horn I'm pretty confident in my own ability to market myself so I think I think I'll be able to hopefully sweet talk my way into something uh, but you're not a marketing major <laughs> <laughs> uh, I say come to the dark side <laughs> Uh, yeah, so Maya, do you think uh, that people are going to come to you for jobs or are you going to have to throw yourself out there? Um, yeah, I'm, again, I think my answer is a little similar to Caesar's. Not exactly because marketing majors are not as, I guess, they're more of us than our statistic majors. Um, but I've, honestly, I think it's two parts. One, just the statistics coming out of Mendoza from Notre Dame are, like, I've, I've seen them were pretty good. Like, coming out of Mendoza, you're just odds are you'll have a job and I'm pretty confident in that like there's just a small percentage of people that don't have a job I think it's like six months out of college from here so I'm just based on that I'm pretty confident I'll have something at the very least um and then also just kind of how I am I've always been a I've always been a worker I've like I have four jobs on campus right now just because and I like enjoy them all and it's but I'm just always been that kind of person and even when like COVID happened my summer internship got canceled so I found other jobs to do over the summer, which weren't exactly what I wanted to do, but I've just kind of always had that work ethic where I'm like, all right, I'll like, I'll find something. And it might not be exactly where I want to be, but I'm confident like I'll have something going out at the very least. And Eduardo, last to you, are you going to be looking for jobs or are they going to be looking for you? Uh, they'll be looking for me, definitely. Um, just because of the computer science majors, which isn't, it's not the easiest thing in the world. It's pretty difficult. And because of that, it's, it's growing in popularity, but given how um, the trends are in this country, we're gonna have like a severe shortage of just computer scientists. 
and my field specifically, which is cybersecurity, is very, very in, de in demand uh, these days, especially because of, you know, the evolving technology and such. So I will definitely have job offers. And, you know, they say, like my professors always say, you're going to have at least five or ten people looking for you. And I plan on getting certified, too, with a bunch of languages um, the next two years. So I think I'll be set um, just in general. So last question. Um, I just want you to raise your hand if you are 100% committed and confident in your major and the career you'll probably get after college. Like, you're going to be 100% happy with it? You're going to be committed to it? Or do you see yourself, I mean, for some of us, some of us, it might be difficult to switch majors now. But like for the freshmen, like, do you think you think you'd switch maybe? Or are you just like, I kind of kind of got to go with it now? Okay, Caesar, you didn't raise your hand. Um. Yeah, I mean, as I said, I kind of came in with a pretty open mind in terms of what I wanted to study. And so I think I'm going to try to retain that kind of open mind and make sure that, you know, I'm certain that this is what I want to do before committing to it. Um, I really love it, but things change all the time. And sometimes people's minds change and you just never know. And you always have to be open to whatever can come with. Um, but I'm pretty confident that if I end up going with it, that it'll be the right thing for me. Um, and, you know, that I'll end up making it work at some point. Do you, so, do you see yourself looking at other majors within your college right now, just kind of thinking about them or? Um, honestly, I don't see myself looking at any other majors within my own college. Uh, this is really the only major I do in the College of Science. Um, if I were to go to another major, it'd probably be something, uh, I think there's the business analytics in Mendoza or, uh, economics and arts and letters, but uh, but it would be outside of the college and science. Come to marketing. <laughs> or come to economics too, we're pretty nice. <laughs> uh, Chloe, you raised your hand. Committed I to so I think I raised my hand more based off that I, I'm confident in my abilities and kind of like my work ethic and how much I like the major where I feel like the major in general, a lot of people might not be as confident with, but the so I think I'm my connection to the film film and like kind of what I like to do that kind of made me confident with it but also it's also a very the major itself is very fun and very engaging so I don't I never fi find myself let down with the major like I've never found myself wanting to like switch majors or questioning whether I should be an FTT major or not because I just love what I'm doing in all my classes so I think I'm pretty much 100% certain that's what I'm going to graduate with, an FTT major, and I'm happy with that. Eduardo, you raised your hand, but I feel like you've had a long history with computers in general, so is that pretty much the contributing factor? Uh, yeah, that's basically what contributing factor, so I'm dedicated to this major, and secondly, um, this major is very flexible, so I could go to serious field like cybersecurity, or I could just like, you know, just have fun with just a gaming um, like developing company. I mean, it's just very flexible what you can do with it. So I'm not too worried about that. It is going to be tedious. And, you know, I might feel like, oh, it's not right for me because, you know, I'm learning like calculus three things or, you know, working with this insane physics. But, you know, it just comes with a job. So I just, I think I, I'm pretty much good. And there'll be some times where I might um, feel like this is too difficult for me, but it's kind of the blow that one goes down anyway. Okay. And then Maya, you raised your hand as well, but I feel like you're a junior, right? Yeah, I was, my big factor is it's a little late in the game for me to be switching it up. Not that marketing isn't a super, especially so is film as far as like what classes and stuff I would have to take. It's pretty flexible, but yeah, a little too late in the game for me to be switching. But I also really enjoy both majors. And one of the reasons I picked marketing was because it's really flexible. Like, um, I guess kind of similar to Eduardo, but like what I could do with it in the future. Like if I suddenly decided I didn't like working in the entertainment industry, I could switch to something else. Like it's it's a transferable major, um, which I really like. So I'm just pretty confident that I'll, going forward, I'll be able to find something I really enjoy doing with it. Um, and it's a little too late for me to change my mind anyway. So I'm sticking to it. <laughs> there we go. Okay, well, that's all my questions for you guys. We made it four minutes to spare. Thank you so much. Uh, as you know, this was recorded. So Anthony and I, later this week, we're going to do some shopping and some editing. And then you guys will be in the finished product of Tea Time episode two. So we will definitely be <laughs> forward that to you guys whenever the project is finished. But uh, no, thank you. Thank you for your guys' uh, inputs. I, 
th I have a lot of things to think about. It was really eye opening for me. So, yeah, you guys are free to go. It was fun. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Is this like a one time so, project? Or are you guys doing this all the time now? Um, just this was a one time thing, the Zoom call. But I don't know. Maybe it seems like you guys liked it too. So <laughs> we could definitely think about some more things to do over Zoom. But okay, cool. This is actually a pretty fun Zoom call. So <laughs> don't have a lot I'm of. I'm gonna shoot this as Menhosa, so everyone knows. <laughs> That was the most valuable thing I learned today. <laughs> That's right. I don't think I've ever heard anyone else say that, but I just, my friends and I, because I have a couple like Mendoza girl friends, when we were talking, we're like, oh, well, we're not Membrosas. And I one day said, oh, no, we're Menhosas. And we just kind of started saying that now. I don't know if anybody else does it. But I was like, we need a female equivalent because we're like, we're not Menbrosas. I, I feel like everyone on campus would be fine with that name. <laughs> well, it's like the Plenos are just Menbrosas or like, such a particular kind of person. And I'm like, well, I'm not that. <laughs> so I'll go with men hoses. And just the all encompassing hose of Mendoza. <laughs> <laughs> all right, awesome. Thanks guys, thanks so much. Perfect, bye. Right. Bye. So now I'm joined on set with uh, Abby Urban, first time on Tea Time, welcome. <laughs> Thank you, I'm so excited to be here. <laughs> and we can joke about careers all day, but when it comes down to it, all of us are going to find ourselves in a job sometime. So uh, we really got to ask more, more serious questions. You know, we can, we can laugh. We can laugh. But when it comes down to it, then I want to do something with my career. You want to do something with your career. Absolutely. Uh, what, what are your career goals? You know, what are you right. looking for in a career? So I'm a film, television, and theater major. And I am in the television concentration. So I'm really interested in television. I mean, I'm excited to be here. Um, but I'm thinking that I'd love to do something in broadcast journalism, or I'd maybe like to work on the public relations side. So I, my career goals right now are not super complete, but I'm really just looking to do something that I feel like is going to be fulfilling and something that I feel like is going to use the talents that I want to put out into the world. What are, what are those um, specific things that I guess you're looking for that you think you'll find fulfillment? Is, like, right. is it the excitement? Is mm -hmm. it, you know, mm -hmm. I have these certain skill sets that I'm really good at and I want to pursue those? What do you think that is? Right, absolutely. I think that it probably... I would say that I really just, I want to perform. I love, <laughs> I love performing. I've done musical theater for a long time, so I love to be in front of people. I love to use my public speaking skills. So I just feel like that's something that makes me feel like I'm making a positive difference and I'm, I'm contributing with using that specific skill. Um, and other than that, I just want to be interacting with people. I really admire people who can work in a lab and, and just be alone all day, but I could never do it personally. So yeah, I just want to be around people and I just, I want to be talking and writing too. I love writing, so. Yeah, yeah. How does, you know, when people talk about careers, then um, a lot of times it's like, oh, starting salary. How does, mm. you know, the money aspect or, um, compensation or benefits how does that factor into the, the whole equation because it's something you got to consider but yeah. do, do you want to make career decisions based on that mm -hmm. uh, I, I don't know right what, what do you think no I think that that's a great question I feel like no matter what that's always going to come into play but I'd say for me I used to be really attached to wanting to have a very specific starting salary um, and, and having these really super high aspirations for that um, and then as I thought about it more I really thought that what would be more fulfilling is doing something that I really enjoy and so while I still want to hopefully start somewhere and kind of work my my way up in what whichever industry I decide to be in Starting salary has a pretty a pretty small effect, I think, on, on what I want to do. So, I mean, I say that now, but maybe as I get closer <laughs> to graduating, I'll start to think about that a little bit more. Yeah, you're a sophomore, right? I am, yes. Sophomore. Okay. So I got some time. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a junior, <laughs> so it started picking up. Yes, oh there, gosh. There's the pressure out there that's like, oh, you, you got to get right. an internship your junior summer, because right. if you don't, you're not going to find a job. Mm -hmm. I'm looking at cameraman Chris over there. <laughs> <laughs> Well, you're in Mendoza too, right? So is that? Oh yeah, yeah. There's social it. pressure there. You know, yeah. everyone's, you know, applying to jobs at the the big four and the mm -hmm. big three. Before I came here, I hadn't heard of Deloitte. I didn't know Deloitte was was a company. No. Now, 
you don't know Deloitte, KPMG, EY, PWC, then you're, you're living under a rock yeah, if you're in Mendoza. I even know, and I'm an FTT major. I've just heard it through the grapevine at this point. Yeah, so, and, yeah. and then there's a big three, too, mm -hmm. like consulting firms, BCG, Bain, and McKinsey. It's like mm -hmm. it's like they quiz you on stuff in, in, on this stuff, an intro to management. But, right, uh, oh. Instead, they just have you watch uh, TED Talks and then ask you about life hacks, 10 most important skills to have as a leader. I don't know. Th this is what you that. get from uh, Chris Stevens' <laughs> management class. <laughs> I, I've heard. I've heard some about that. So that's always interesting to me. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, you can, you can feel like the pressure almost in the building, in the, in the men, mm. menbroses. Um, right. But so I've heard. <laughs> Part of my journey has been kind of feeling that and then mm -hmm. being able to be independent and say, like, this isn't what I, you know, what I personally want for my career. Right. Some people, uh, that's what they want. They want the big city vibes. They mm -hmm. want to go out with their mm -hmm. friends on the weekends in Chicago or um, be traveling to mm -hmm. different exotic places in Europe uh, right. every, every week. But... I know. I think a lot of people kind of confuse the sort of ideal lifestyle and sort of all the things that go along with the career, with the career itself. It's like, yes, of course, you want to have a lifestyle that's conducive to your living habits. But at the same time, you don't want that to get in the way of your career itself, because that is what you're actually going to be doing. And at the end of the day, that's what's, that's what's going to affect how you feel, I think. So... I mean, maybe that's just me, but I think it's some of both, but you really got to, I think you have to think about the career too. And another question is, where, where, do, where does the excitement come in your life? Does it come um, from the career that you're doing or does it come from what you do when you get home at the end of the day after, mm -hmm. you know, your day job? If we ask those questions, then it kind of changes it a lot. Why, if mm -hmm. your excitement doesn't come for your, from your career, then why are you working 80 hours a week? Right. I know. I feel like that's something that kind of depends on the type of person. I know some people who are just super hardworking or for whatever reason, they have to have this particular job and just, you know, go and do that. And then they have their activities that sort of help them to stress relieve or kind of do things that they enjoy after after hours. But um, yeah, I think it would be ideal to have both or some of both, hopefully at least just something in your career that, that you like. I mean, that you, you don't hate, but hopefully like. And then hopefully supplementing that with other things um, that you enjoy. So you can just feel like your whole life is filled with, oh, it just sounds so idealistic <laughs> when I say it, but I think you just want to like your career, but acknowledge that it's going to still have its challenges and then have things outside of that that are going to be um, things that you enjoy as well. Yeah, that makes sense to me, you know. That's, yeah. That's like what I want in my right. life. I want me to too. be able to enjoy my job, but then have a clear division where, you know, I have a life outside of my job. Mm -hmm. I have mm -hmm. a family and I can have fun with them, that exactly. sort of thing. Um, sure. You sound similar, you know. Yeah, <laughs> definitely, definitely. Yes. I, I think some people just kind of give up. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure if that's what actually happens, but part of me thinks that um, some people, yeah, like you said, oh, this is too idealistic, this, is, mm -hmm. this isn't how the world actually works. Um, right. I, I don't know. I how think do you about think people, of that assessment? Right. I think about people in the workforce that I, that I know, and I know a lot of them, they're passionate about what they're doing ultimately, but the day-to-day -day can kind of get them down sometimes. And I understand that. And I think in a cert at a certain point, too, when you're established in your career, it's hard to think about, oh, is this really making me happy? It kind of, it's just a habit, it's a routine. And I completely understand that. So I think a lot of people aren't, you know, 40 and they're like, oh, I'm just gonna take a huge pivot. I'm gonna go into this whole new sector of my industry or something like that. So I think a lot of times it's just what you have to do. And especially as, as you have a family and stuff, I know you're talking about like, oh, I wanna enjoy time with my family. I think for a lot of people, it's like providing for their family and making sure that they have maintained this life that they've created. I think that that kind of, that comes into play a lot. Yeah, and these are the decisions that we get to make. Right. Now or next year or oh, know, two okay. years down the oh. road. Oh. Yes. <laughs> oh man. We're too young for this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, and so there's pressure. 
too, mm -hmm. to, to make the right decision because you think, oh, if I don't make the, the right career decision now, then I'm screwing myself for the rest of my mm -hmm. life. Mm -hmm. do, do you think that's accurate? Yeah, I think that that depends on what you're going into. I would say, at least from what I've observed, in uh, for most majors or most kind of fields of study, you're able to sort of branch off into different areas. I know for me that was something that I kind of wanted to think about as I was going into FTT, to think about, okay, well, here's this general industry, the space that I want to be in, but I can branch off into different areas if I find, if I start somewhere and I think, oh, no, this is not what I want to do. But I think... Yeah, I would say a lot of people, they tend to just get boxed in because they get into habits of things. But I think in a lot of different areas of study, like I was talking to you about my roommate about engineering um, a little bit, and she, I know that she can work in the technical side, but then she can also do engineering consulting and different things and looking at different elements of the process. So I think there are always ways to modify it. I think it's hard to do a complete switch sometimes, but hopefully there's some middle ground. Yeah, yeah, and I spoke with, uh, in one of my classes, I have a GOAT professor, Laura Hollis, you're the GOAT. We <laughs> talked about, um, you know, how people kind of get these ideas in their minds, like, oh, I have to make the right decision now, or I'm mm -hmm. screwed. Um, and you pointed out, you know, there's many different ways to pivot, and people just get up and change, change industries and things like that. I, um, I know some stories of, um, my dad's in education, so I've mm -hmm. heard stories of administrators who, you know, might be very kind of high up in a school district, and then they just decide, I really enjoy working in the classroom best, mm -hmm. and that's what gives them joy. So they mm -hmm. um, jump what what would some would view as like way down the ladder and go back into the classroom because that's what gives them energy and that's right. the career that they want. Uh, right, and I think that's an important point of thinking about other people's idea of success versus your own success and happiness and how those are intertwined because so many people think, oh yes, you got to the highest level and you're earning the most and that should be making you happy and making you feel fulfilled. But a lot of times it's like, no, if that's not what you enjoy, you have to evaluate, is this really making me happy? Is this making me feel like I am making a difference out there? And I think that's the point that everybody would want to get to. And that brings up a really good question of why is it that we work? And yes. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to come back to that question mm -hmm. after we cut to an interview talking about, you know, there's weird majors out there. There's <laughs> Um, medieval studies that mm -hmm. you know I think they're weird personally I, I don't understand them completely there's um, one that gets a lot of slack is gender studies there's majors that people think oh you can't get a you can't get a degree with that or a, a job with that <laughs> you can get a degree <laughs> in it but not a job um, philosophy is one that comes up too so uh, we're gonna cut to an interview where I sit down with somebody with a, a different major one that you wouldn't expect to be you know competitive in the job market and we're going to talk a little bit about that. Thank you for joining me on Tea Time. Today we're talking about careers. The whole goal of, of this little bit is some people have careers like accounting where it's very easy to see you know oh accountants or accountancy majors become accountants and they work for big companies and do accounting activities. It's very simple you know you go and work for the big four or some medium or small sized accounting firm and it's very clear whereas some majors like gender studies, medieval studies, um, philosophy, it's kind of a little more broad like what, what does a philosophy major do for work? Why, why would you study philosophy if you can't get a job? After all there's that big segment of the population that says you should go to college so that you can get a good job. So if you study philosophy are you just you know Fighting the norm? Do you just not want to, not not want to listen to your parents? Are all philosophers <laughs> rebels? What is this? So uh, I have you on today. W what are your majors? What are you studying here at college? My majors are English and theology. English and theology. And why did you choose those majors? You know, do you want to become a theologian or a <laughs> Shakespeare? Or what, what made you just choose those? Um, well, at first I was English and I was going to be pre-vet as well. Uh, but then I went to Gen Chem Lab in the first week of school and said, nope, this isn't it. <laughs> so, uh, so I thought back about some kind of experiences in high school that I had where I was reading kind of like 
theological literature in a way, and I found that to be uh, uh, like some really moving experiences, I think. Um, so uh, yeah, kind of putting the two together just kind of made a lot of sense for me. Uh, yeah, I wanted to read good books, but I also wanted to have like the kind of theological uh, training to ask sort of these bigger questions that would come up in these works. So you yeah. chose more to study based on, um, you know, what interested you? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'd say so. And also I had, I think that at this point I'll probably teach in one way or another. Um, and I had some good role models who were teachers in high school as well, so they kind of uh, inspired me to, to want to do that. All right, so are you looking at like ACE or TFA or something like that? Um, I'm not super sure yet. Uh, I'll probably do, I'll, I'll definitely do a year or two of service after graduation. Uh, my high school does a sort of like, uh, like a volunteer program where you basically just teach like two classes for a year or something like that. Um, and so that seems like a pretty cool option as well. But I've also uh, studied some languages here, and I kind of like learning different languages. So I think that doing some sort of international service work would be kind of cool as well. So I may apply for a Fulbright scholarship or something like that to go and uh, teach, um, yeah, uh, abroad. So something like that, I think, would be good to kind of take a break from, from academia for a little bit after graduating. <laughs> so Yeah. How... How much trouble did you go through, like mentally deciding, like you know, what, what do I want to do with an English and theology major? Well, maybe I could do one thing or the other thing, and then you settled on teaching. What was that mental process like for you? Was it easy? Was it more difficult? Um, it was definitely a gradual thing, and it was probably, I mean, maybe the process itself was a little difficult, but I, I'm definitely very happy with the decision that I've made in the long run. So in the long run, I see it as a very good thing. But yeah, I think kind of throughout, towards the end of high school, I started thinking like, okay, maybe veterinary medicine isn't really for me and things like that. So I, I came into Notre Dame uh, with that idea that I would be a veterinarian, but then I started seeing all of the different options that I'd have here to study and all the resources that I'd have uh, to help me learn these cool things that I really wanted to know. Um, so, uh, yeah, once I got to that point, um, once I saw that lots of people really enjoyed these things and were able to live really fulfilling lives if they studied these things, um, yeah, it just kind of seemed to, to make sense for me. And, uh, yeah, it's been a very rewarding decision so far. So you can get a career with a theology major or an English major? It seems like it. I mean, <laughs> I guess I don't have one yet, but um, it does seem like it, yeah. I mean, for me, I guess... Uh, yeah, for me, I want to teach, I think, um, but a lot of other people, this looks kind of different, you know, some, I mean, the skills that you learn in English and theology are pretty applicable, I think, in, in lots of different jobs. It teaches you to think in uh, really different ways from, I think, how a lot of people uh, are sort of trained to think by doing other majors, so it can be really useful for getting uh, all sorts of different jobs, I think. Do you ever have conversations with other people in your major who maybe aren't thinking about teaching and... Um, what, are, what are some of the things they're looking into for post-grad? Yeah. Um, or are they lost? <laughs> <laughs> um, some of them, I think, are somewhat lost, I think. Uh, um, but yeah, I mean, a lot of people are thinking about uh, law school, and a lot of people are thinking about teaching as well. Um, a lot of people are thinking uh, about doing service programs right, off, uh, right out of graduation as well, I think, because that's kind of like a good space to discern what you want to do for a career for, for a long time. So, um, yeah, I think you get a pretty full range. And, of course, a lot of other people aren't doing just English or just theology. They'll kind of pair it up with another major. So, like, some people who are uh, pre-med or something like that, they'll pair it with one of these liberal arts majors because it helps them think in new and different ways. It, like, if you're going to be a doctor, it helps you relate to patients in new ways and things like that. So these skills are, I think, pretty easily transferable a lot of the time. Yeah, so learning how to think is almost as important as learning technical skills, is what you're yeah, saying? Yeah, yeah. Got to know how to apply these technical skills, and especially if you're working with other people. It's really great if you know how to relate to people really well, you know? Yeah, yeah. So what the pundits say, you know, oh, you're studying philosophy. Do you not want a job? <laughs> Would you say that's accurate? or? Uh, I don't know if that's accurate. I think that, uh, yes, people can live uh, happy lives and, uh, and have a career as a philosophy, theology, English, liberal arts major, whatever it may be. For, yeah. So you can find a career doing what you love. I think so. It seems so.
Yeah. Isn't that great news? It is very good news. <laughs> I must ask you about your mug. Oh, yes, my mug. What have uh, you joined us with today? I have Betsy's Pancake House, New Orleans. I have a mug this, uh, from there. Yes, it's a sweet little breakfast place from, uh, from my home in New Orleans where I've got some, some good memories with friends and whatnot. So, yeah. Nola, Betsy's Pancake House. Yes, if you're in New Orleans, hit mm -hmm. up Betsy's. All right, all right. I'll give you a call. Yes. <laughs> Maybe we can talk about, you know, the, the students you will inevitably be teaching. <laughs> yes, over the breakfast special, yeah. Oh, the breakfast special. Oh, yes. Perfect. Well, thank you for joining me today, and I hope this gives everyone kind of a little, a little comfort to knowing that, you know, whatever we do, maybe it directly leads to a job. Maybe it just gives us the skills of how to think, but um, we, there's still careers out there. While I'm at it, I should give a, a what is it? A shameless plug. I've talked with a couple of folks who have went to the career center, sat down with career counselors, and had a sort of discussion about what they want to do with their career when they have no idea. Um, and the folks up there I hear are very good at helping you out. So if you're just totally lost and you don't know what you want to study, you obviously, you know, have started to get an idea. Um, you're looking towards teaching and you're a junior, so it's kind of it's kind of good that you started to have a, an idea of what you want to do post-grad, but um, if, if you're confused, hit up the Career Center. They're there for a reason. Uh, set up a meeting with the career counselor, and they can definitely help you out. So, thank you. Anything you want to leave the listeners of Tea Time with today? Oh, gosh. Yeah, I don't know. Just do what you love, and I think that uh, all will turn out for the good. So, yeah. Well, thank you for coming on, Jake. It's My pleasure. Great. Thank you, Anthony. Years. So I hope that challenged the way that, you know, we think about our major or our jobs a little bit. And let's, let's come back to the question, why, why do we work, you know? Mm -hmm. Why don't we just live in a van down by the river? That's, that's a very good question. <laughs> I feel like it comes back to um, humans' inherent sense of having a purpose in life and you want to, whether that be, I think in the very early, early times, it was just like protecting the people around you or protecting your family. And I think that that's something that still um, persists. And I think people just want to be driven by something and have goals ultimately. And I feel like work is a way that we can do that. And of course, you know, if we're gonna have, as I don't wanna give a comprehensive history of like, <laughs> I don't know, industrialization or whatever, but as people started to have, um, you know, different companies and factories and things like that, then people, you know, they need people to work it, and then you have this, um, again, I think a very natural human idea of, like, here's the hierarchy of people, and, like, I want to work my way up. I think it's just kind of natural, so I think people fall into those kinds of patterns. Yeah, yeah, the natural hierarchy, and we want to climb our way up. Yes. What, what does that hierarchy look like? Like, who's at the top? Ooh, who's at the top from a career perspective, or from a? You mean know. they're not one and the same? <laughs> <laughs> career isn't everything in your life. Crazy. Yes, <laughs> I know. I your think... career doesn't determine your moral worth. I know. Who would have guessed? But I think from a career perspective, that would be, you know, being the CEO of a company or something like that, reaching that kind of top level where you have the top earnings, the most respect, and people report to you. That's what I would think of. Yeah, yeah. Yes. <laughs> Crazy stuff. Can you believe it, guys? Your career and your salary don't determine your moral worth? Mm -hmm. And it's interesting if we look at um, some research psychologists do this thing where they send out a bunch of surveys and then they smash them all together and say this is research well yes. one of them says things like gen z you and me and all of you out there who are our similar age uh, looks for things like impact in mm. the career choice that they make they want to impact the world whatever this impact is mm -hmm. um, Whereas millennials or baby boomers or things looked more to things like, oh, I want to be able to provide for my family. Mm -hmm. You know, I might not really enjoy my job, but it's okay because I'm supporting my local, my local people. Mm -hmm. And uh, Gen Z looks more at, you know, impact. I want to make an impact in the world. Is this something that we should be looking at in our career? Are we, are we privileged because we can seek mm -hmm. to impact the world? Uh, 
Yeah, I guess I didn't initially think of it as being a privilege, but then as we were talking, I was thinking more and more about why do I feel bad when I keep talking about like, oh, I want to go out there and make a difference in the world. And I feel like that's because for my parents' generation, there was that idea that you need to provide for your family and I just need to go to work and then kind of suck it up and come home and do what I need to do. So I think, I think that will always be inside of me as an important value. But I think that we do need to find a balance with that, trying to find um, a way to impact the world in something that feels, feels good for you, but also that you're able to help the people around you too. So I know it's kind of a generic answer, <laughs> but I really do think it's all about balance. Yeah, yeah, and you can do both things. Mm -hmm. uh, at least from my perspective, I think that you could find a job that still supports uh, your family, a, a, generous lifestyle mm -hmm. maybe not you know making millions of dollars unfortunately right. and <laughs> a job that you know you can support your family and still um, make time for something that you enjoy and have mm -hmm. some sort of an impact beyond um, just your, your immediate circle right. at the same time you know there, there might be something to be said for people who think you know in my life I don't really care about creating world peace as a person mm -hmm. or, you know, I, I just want to make sure that my kids grow up into strong, independent, capable human beings or, you know, maybe I don't want to fix the country, but my local community, I, I'd love to make that a better place, that sort right. of thing. I right. think there is something to be said for people like that too. Mm -hmm. um, I agree, yeah, I think it's about your personal views as well. Because I know a lot of times, I think, when you're talking about researchers, sorry to generalize to the researchers, but there's this very specific idea of this is what Gen Z is and this is what Gen Z values. It's like, no, there are lots of different people within that generation who value different things. So I think it really, it does depend on the person. And I think it's important to realize that that balance of having impact and still being able to provide for people is never going to be perfect, but as long as you can kind of try to strive for either one of this. I can feel my parents like watching this when I show it to them and they're gonna be like, oh my gosh, Abby, you don't get it. But <laughs> at least that's what I think right now as a humble 20 year old. <laughs> yes, yes, lots to learn for mm -hmm. all of us. I acknowledge <laughs> that wholeheartedly. I have to give another shout out to the GOAT, Laura Hollis. We, we <laughs> talked about, like this is a great class. You sit down, you talk about how to be your best person and how to mm -hmm. be, um, uh, an effective person with other people. It's just a class about dealing with yourself and other people. But mm -hmm. one of the quotes that came up in our in our required reading, mm. uh, which dope. <laughs> Why? Okay, <laughs> I'll leave it alone. <laughs> uh, is um, something along the lines of, it is more noble to devote or sacrifice yourself completely for one person than for this kind of the impersonal masses or something mm -hmm. like that. I did not quote it specifically or correctly, but just an interesting perspective. It challenges you. Because when, when, at least when I was young, I was like, oh, there are so many problems in the world. I want to fix them. And they're big mm -hmm. problems and huge mm -hmm. problems. And then this other perspective says, if you can be a good, a good friend or a good sibling or a, a good parent, then like, that's something to be very proud of. Right, no, I agree. I think that there's really something to be said about starting small and whether that be starting with one person or a small community or something like that. I know my dad is a very religious man and he always talks about like help one person get to heaven. You know, obviously you wanna try to do more than that if that's your goal, but yeah, just starting small and realizing that you can make a difference by just doing those little things. Hopefully they will add up over time too. Yeah. Well, this has been a very good conversation. It's and so good. it wouldn't be tea time if we didn't talk about the tea that we're drinking. It's so good. Hook me up, Chris. <laughs> oh, yes. we got some some Bengal spice tea out here on set. It's delicious, uh, I will celestial say. Celestial seasonings. They mm -hmm. have so many different kinds of tea. Mm -hmm. It's like insane. I need to go, I bet they have like a, I bet they have a big tea collection with a bunch of different kinds. Mm -hmm. I need to. I need to go look on they their website. Sleepy time. I know. I've seen that mm, before. Yes. Need to sleepy get to sleep. Time. I don't know. I've say? used it before. I don't. <laughs> I don't know if it's like a 
marketing ploy or not? Maybe. Placebo? Mm, we'll see. I'm in principles of marketing right now, so uh, I'll, I'll do some research. I'll nice. get back to you, Anthony. All right, all right. <laughs> I'll be waiting in suspense. All right, all right. <laughs> yeah, but what do you think? Five stars, four stars, three? Oh, I would say five. And I, I wouldn't say I'm a tea connoisseur, but I do like tea a lot, and I think that this one is, is very good. Mm, I'm going to yes. say five. <laughs> I have had some before, and this, this is a better cup. Uh, mm -hmm. I, if you make it too strong, one star mm -hmm. for sure. But yeah, I'd put this up there in the in the four to five range. Mm -hmm. Would recommend. Very good. Mm. And uh, <laughs> that's all I got. Is that all you got? Yeah, I think I'm good. Well, welcome, uh, or <laughs> <laughs> welcome and goodbye for this episode of Tea Time, where we got to chit chat about careers. Mm -hmm. uh, we saw them humorously. We saw them seriously. We saw them philosophically, and um, that's about all I could do for you. You know, if you have any more questions, hit up a career counselor. Mm -hmm. So they're fantastic. <laughs> I have many times. <laughs> <laughs> the proof is in the pudding. <laughs> <laughs>